sing because I think I can sing. I just want to sing. <laughs> Once I wandered out in sin, had no peace, no joy within me, and my soul was burdened down with pride. But the Savior came along. the wind inside Well, I'm on the winning side I'm on the winning side No more I'm still Well, I am not I've been listening in the fire for the cause but you had right to raise a Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. But before we get started, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and check out our backlog of great content for you guys. And then also consider hitting this join button, becoming a channel member today. You get all kinds of perks and things like that. And if this video was a blessing to you, don't forget to click the link below and make a donation in the PayPal. God bless you, friend, and we appreciate you. May God speak to your heart during this video. This is heresy. This church here on the left, and then uh, you, you see the yoga class on the right. Both of these groups are having the same involuntary shakings, and uh, the manifestations of the Kundalini is uh, one of the manifestations is uncontrolled shakings, and both of these parties are having the same experience. Justin, I just think we're being too narrow-minded here. Too narrow-minded.
we're, uh, we're, we're not loving enough. We're not affirming enough. We are not, uh, we're not gracious enough to people who see it differently than we do. And uh, all that. Uh, we're, we're live. Sorry about that. Hey, everybody. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, glad to see you all. We're joined here in the studio tonight uh, with Brother Justin Ross in the studio. <laughs> Forget what you just saw. And uh, that didn't happen at all. So anyway, but we, uh, we're glad to be here with you guys. I've got a good Zevia ready to go for me tonight. This is a creamy root beer Zevia. And uh, do you like Zevia? Oh, yeah. We drink those. Or do you not like the Lord song? I mean, I, it doesn't replace a Dr. Pepper, but it, it's enjoyable. Dr. Pepper. My mom's <laughs> big Dr. Pepper stuff. It's just their sin. So anyway, here. Um, you know, I got, let's see. This says this says no sound. What am I doing with no sound? What is happening with the sound? I may get start all over. I'm not having it. I got no sound. I got right here. Hang on. We got sound. India. What? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Hang on. I, I messed something up. Let me do something real quick. I'll fix it. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Will there be a next time when I need some mercy? Will grace be sufficient? Oh, how. That's enough of Sarah. Let's have let's have a live stream now. Worst live stream ever. We were having a conversation about something. What were we talking about? Uh, how you like Dr. Pepper more than Zevia? Dr. Pepper is not as good as Zevia. Zevia has no calories, no sugars, and it is a chemically created sweet substance that is designed to please the North American palate and is probably a class five carcinogen. But it tastes good. So, praise the Lord for that. As long as it tastes good, it doesn't matter. Did you know that bacon is a class 5 carcinogen? I did, actually. Yeah. And it is like like cigarettes are class 4 and bacon is a class 5. I guarantee you that will stop nobody from eating it. What a way to die. Maybe, maybe... Osama bin Laden was right. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe these Muslims were were true. I don't know. That's I've I thought for years that the reason that Muslims were always angry is because they didn't eat bacon. And uh, but that's that turned out that's not the case. So anyway, we're doing a live stream tonight, and uh, everybody's texting me and telling me that there's no sound of live. I know. I'm sorry, and uh, so. Uh, Brother Justin, tell me something. I'm going to take a drink of this Zevia. Yep. I need you to tell us, everybody, something spiritual. we got 2,000 people watching and um, and all that stuff. So tell us something real spiritual while I drink a Zevia for a second. Well, we're in Nome. We had Dr. Pepper. Okay. Dr. Pepper has been a lifesaver wherever I've been. Now, I've given oh. you grace because I've, I appreciate mm. your doctrinal stance on no pineapple on pizza. I, yeah. I do very much appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. That's, that's correct. Hallelujah. But I'm having oh, yeah. second, second guesses. When Zevia replaces How dare even you? mug root beer or bar root beer. Well, I, I'm trying to look. Okay, I'm trying to avoid the diabetes. Okay, uh, I don't want the diabetes. diabetes. So I, those old commercials. Diabetes. Yeah, <laughs> eat more cake, diabetes. <laughs> and uh, so that's what we're trying. That's what we're trying to take care of. And I, I don't know. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to eliminate as much sugar as I can in my life. Even though my my children snow uh, just what a snow shoveled. The neighbor's driveway, and then she made a whole thing of cookies and brought it over, and now that ruined my whole day. So anyway, um, so everybody, everybody saw about bacon. Easy on the bacon, chief. I can't live without it. 
That's the seventh person today that called me chief. chief. So I appreciate that. Um, let's see. I tell people when I die, I put a pig in my casket because I want to go to heaven happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty good. Guess Strawberries and cream, Dr. Pepper is pretty good. You ever it had is. that? Yeah, I've had that. Man. Mm. It's good All right. I, I remember, okay, cherry Dr. Pepper messed me up years ago. I got to where I was in, and I was in shape. I was fit. I was riding my bike. I was traveling. I was on top of it. I was doing well. And um, and then this commercial came out with Gene Simmons talking about Dr. Pepper Cherry. And uh, I said, yeah, I ain't had a Dr. Pepper Cherry in a long time. And I went and got a Dr. Pepper Cherry. And it was like I relapsed, that okay, worked. so bad into that stuff. And uh, it's it just not good. So and and it ruined me. So Dr Pepper, I blame Dr Pepper for that. Uh, Sev says Spencer, I thought that we agreed a while back on the wind on the on that we will blow the wind of God on diabetes. That's right. I don't believe God does anything. Wait, no, that's not the right one. There you go. Where's my Kenneth Copeland? I execute judgment on you, Satan. Yeah, that's right. So uh, Spencer Smith, what do you think about Christians or about Christmas watching horror movies? Must be Christians watching horror movies. Oh, <laughs> what do you think about Christians watching horror movies? I'll be honest, I never was a fan of horror movies personally. Yeah. One, they always make the wrong mistake, which I get. That's what makes the movie worth it. But yeah. It, it. I just don't know. I just never cared for it personally, but I don't ever saw the good in it either. Well, I I I don't like them because I think I think you can get a demonic spirit on your life with all that stuff and so i don't mess with that stuff i'd I I leave it alone. Yeah. my mother-in-law she's so funny she watched that movie the ring yeah okay and she said that's the last movie i ever watched in my life was the ring and i i watched it i think when i was in college i watched it and i was like oh that is the scariest <laughs> movie and i think it was one of the last ones i ever watched too so praise the lord that i ain't doing none of that stuff ever again i ain't even i ain't never even like i'll, I'll tell you this when i was a kid um, that Chucky movie came out called Child's Play. And yeah. uh, I, like I told you about my friend Adam. I was yep. staying over at his house. Somebody brought that movie in, and 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 Adam's mom, Kathy, said, we ain't watching that movie because Spencer's mom was going to get mad at me if we watched that movie. And uh, and sure enough, they, they argued back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And she said, okay, y'all can watch the movie if Spencer goes in the back room. And so I went in the back room. And then uh, they started watching the movie. But I got bored. So I just came out there, and I, I was in second grade. And I came out there, and I watched Child's Play. And I had nightmares for three years. <laughs> I mean, I, I I couldn't look at a G.I. Joe the same way. I thought it was going to wake up and kill me. I, I just couldn't look at it. Like, that was when Cabbage Patch dolls were a thing. And uh, they were still around <laughs> a little bit. And I'm telling you, those Cabbage Patch dolls scared me to death because I thought they were going to grow up and kill me. And um, and so, and I, I remember not long after that weird stuff would happen. Like, uh, you, you remember the Teddy Ruxpin? Okay, um, you ain't ever lived until you put an Ozzy Osbourne tape in a Teddy Ruxpin, man. <laughs> you know, and uh, he he's singing he's singing Crazy Train with that mouth moving on that Teddy Ruxpin, but that's something else. Uh, but I remember like that Teddy Ruxpin would talk to you. I remember one night I got up for like two in the morning and I was walking through the living room for some reason in my house, and Teddy Ruxpin was on the on the couch, and Teddy Ruxpin looks at me and goes, "Hey, what are you doing?" And that was one of the things it was programmed to say. Yeah. And it just randomly went off and said, what are you doing? <laughs> and I ran through the door to my bedroom that night. It was horrible. So anyway, um, that's that's my take on that. And, um, and Charlene White says, I've never let scary movies into my house. I agree with that. And uh, so um, let's see here. There was another comment up here. Oh, Carrie Ann says, I'm a Diet Pepsi junkie. You ever had Diet Pepsi? I've tried it. Yeah. I'm not a fan, but <laughs> yeah. Um, Farasha said, "Bad mouthing bacon is heresy." How dare you! <laughs> I'm not bad mouthing bacon. I'm just telling you, it's a class five carcinogen, and that's just that's just all I'm saying. So, and I I like it. I want to eat it. If there's some here, I'd take a big bite of it right now. So, uh, Case and Lee, have you ever heard of Jonathan Kahn? Yes, I have. Uh, Jonathan Kahn is a charismatic. He's ecumenical. And uh, the funny thing is he came out with a book called uh, Return of the Gods or something like that. Um, and he he put a lot of the same stuff in his book that I put in uh, Third Adam 3 with the divine feminine and the goddess worship and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, and But the funny thing was, like, he was going on Sid Roth's channel and promoting it. He was going on Kenneth Copeland and promoting it. Matter of fact, I'll just, let's just pull this up because I want everybody to know. I want everybody to have the, the, the dirt 
the, the you know on on Jonathan Kahn. Let's see here. Um, he was on TBN and all that. And yeah, I've seen that. And uh, let's see here. I'm I'm pull up Jonathan Kahn and Kenneth Copeland. That's what I want to pull up here. Yes, sir. Here we go. Um, let us make. Uh, let's just make that uh, right size here. And uh, there you go. Look, look, ladies and gentlemen. That's that right there is all I need to know about Jonathan Kahn. He is a. Uh, He's he's obviously not squared away. They say he's a rabbi or something like that. I don't know, but I have heard of of Jonathan Kahn, and uh, that's all I gotta say about Jonathan Kahn right there. Any man who would do that, like if I sit across the table from Kenneth Copeland, I think I'd I, that my hand wouldn't be in his hand. My hand would be a little bit higher and across the way a little bit. So that's all I'm saying to everybody. So how's that? Uh, how's how do you think that? Did I answer that okay? Yeah. No. He. Uh, I mean, he knows a lot about. Um prophecy yeah that's his of course that's what he studied a lot in and and i've read a couple of his book um and they have good stuff in them but like you said i don't care that he stands on the stage or he'll shake hands with literally anybody yeah well that, <laughs> that's, yeah that's, that's true that's my uh i mean yes he has great stuff but at the same time he uh it's who he fellowships with is what i'm not a fan of yeah that that's the problem with with a lot of these guys they uh man they they say a lot of good but they say a lot of bad yeah, so that's- um. Yeah. So that's that's the thing on Jonathan Khan and Manica says here. Khan is a mystic. He absolutely is. And uh, oh, yeah. good job, Manica. And then we got a Larkin Jackson, my my brother right there, saying, uh, "What are your thoughts on Mister Beast?" Um, <laughs> he's rich. He's wealthy. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy is his name. Yeah. Um, Jimmy needs to get saved. Is what happened. Mr. Beast, I'm going to call him Jimmy, okay? Yep. Jimmy went to a Christian school in North Carolina. I actually heard about that. A, ba- a Baptist Christian school in North yep. Carolina. Played basketball. Uh, he's actually a pretty good baseball player and such. Um, but uh, what was it? There was something I was going to tell about him. Okay, you know how, like, um, in the Hunger Games, all these elite rich people have a big game every year where they put yeah. everybody into, like, a Lord of the Flies type scenario where they see who gets to kill each other and all that kind of stuff and whatever. I think he is a G-rated version of that. Yeah. Most of his videos are like, let's let's torture a man for 50 days. <laughs> You know, yeah. For our pleasure and for your pleasure on TV as well. I'm like, this man has become uh, this becomes some rich elite guy, and it's just funny to watch all that. So anyway, but uh, he actually just posted his first full video on Twitter. Did you know that? I did not. That's know. a huge deal for social media uh, because uh, because that means that YouTube might be having to uh, adjust a few things here. So anyway, Mary Lou one one six zero says Spencer tomorrow is my birthday. Well, happy birthday there for you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Mary Lou, and all that stuff right there. Uh, my old church did a rendition of Thriller for Chris- Christmas service. They were supposed to be the Grinch. I just had to share that. You know what the Thriller is? Yep. Michael Jackson. You're a pretty good dancer, aren't you? Uh, nope, but... Oh, well, anyway, so that's not what your wife said. I had to turn that air off. This air's killing me, man. <laughs> anyway, so um, let's see here. Oh, uh, Mr. Beats supports transgender. Yes, he does. He's a liberal. That's why I say he yeah. needs to get saved. Like his, well, his right-hand man, whatever, that's been with him. Yeah. Came out. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Um, Man, Chris, I... I don't. I don't get Chris. I'm not, I'm not critical of Chris, but like, um, man, I man, like he had a beautiful wife. He had a daughter. Nice family. Yeah. And he just he just left him. Just and and I I I really felt bad for him. I mean, just like, uh, like, bro, what what are you doing? Yeah. And so really that that's why we don't watch Mr. Beast anymore. I used some of his early videos were just harmless funny stuff, you know. Uh, but we don't watch him anymore because of that. And uh, and he's he stood with him and supported him. And uh, like look at this. This is right here. This is his wife and daughter. Uh, I think it was his daughter. Um but uh but he he just left them to go pursue this this other lifestyle that he wants to do and uh it is it's it's sad in my opinion it's very sad and uh so you know that's that's what's going on with that and that i think really that's the part of all the the angle of mr beast's channel that really makes me think oh boy this is 
it's bad because of his popularity and how many kids watch that and and that's planting seeds that will grow and will could change the moral fabric of an entire nation but i i mean i do think that the 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 lord's in control of course but as 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 the world gets more wicked man we're, there's no telling how bad it's going to be i mean the whole world's going to be amsterdam before it's all over with so um yeah so uh do you ever watch any of his stuff yeah i've seen a lot what of do you think well the same thing the problem is he's seen as honestly almost like an idol um is that mm. people just because he's he's successful he's rich mm. he makes funny videos and and so for him affirming that this is okay with his um with chris and everything I'm like well mr beast is okay with it and look at him look where he's at look how successful he is and just little things like that people will say you know what yeah Maybe it's not a big deal yeah who cares and and you know and it's become very popular and we, we talked about in third item three it's 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 a very common thing now yeah um but man i mean just i i just like that really surprised me well it and, did yeah you know like we watched one of his videos while we were down in dominican republic and uh you know there we stayed in the airbnb down there had a big tv so i turned it on turned on uh turned on the youtube and um a lot of people thought jimmy was going to lose a lot of subscribers over that but he didn't he didn't yeah and he didn't and uh and it's because he didn't make a big deal about it that's that's why he didn't lose a whole lot of subscribers over it but uh i just i feel bad for that that woman that he married and uh, got a lot of questions here. Okay, so um, what do you think about Little Nas X announcing he's getting he's converted to Christianity, yet he still says he can still be gay and it's okay? <laughs> um, yeah, um, wrong kind of Christianity. Have, have you seen? Have you ever looked at Little Nas X or anything like that? I know who he is, but I don't know much about him other than he's... yeah. Okay, well, um, I'll, I'll just tell everybody about him real quick. This guy is a he's a professional troll is what he is and uh, he makes he makes so he like he loves making everybody aggravated yeah. like he loves it he enjoys it and um and, and that's just what he's he's gonna keep on doing that till till jesus comes i guess or till he dies or whatever but like that that's his thing that's his comedy is is trying to trigger people and upset people and uh so you know him doing that is just another big joke to him yeah so i don't i wouldn't take him don't 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 feed the troll don't don't feed the troll and um so that's what i that's what i gotta say there uh spencer who's your friend haven't been on for a while glad to be back lots going on so who is this who is this guy over here well this is uh this is brother justin ross brother brother justin want you to give everybody just like a two minute introduction to you real oh, quick tell about who you are right, so yeah um, so real quick, I basically grew up in church my whole life, uh, saved at a young age, surrendered to ministry, um, joined the military, got married all in the same year. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an exciting time. But wow. um, while stationed in North Carolina, the Lord really placed on my heart and my wife's heart to get into ministry. And um, after serving in the church, we surrendered to ministry and went to Alaska for a few years, working in remote areas there, um, going to remote villages. Um, Nome was one of the places we stayed for about a year, working with the church there. And I traveled about eight villages by snow machine there, doing Bible study, circuit ministry, things of that nature. And uh, worked a little bit off the Yukon River, going to several villages over there. It's kind of the same thing, circuit riding ministry. Um, just served in that area. And long story short, Lord kind of opened a door for us to kind of help out here in the missions area too. And um, that's about as short as I can make without telling my whole life story. But mm. um Pretty much, yeah. Uh, been serving in ministry ever since. Well, good, good. Yeah, and he's going to be working with us here um, with Lighthouse Baptist Missions and stuff, and so we're going to be talking together, doing a lot of stuff, and uh, we're going to have a good time together, so that'll be fun. So, uh, Lord Ch Chard P. Richard P.R., y'all y'all got these usernames, man, that are just out of this world. Uh, what do you think about Chris Roseboro? Well, uh, Chris Roseboro is a Lutheran guy. Seems like he's a nice guy. He's him and I say a lot of the same stuff, uh, but he's a Lutheran. I, I don't know, um, and I'm not sure exactly what denominational affiliation. I think he's more of an independent Lutheran, not necessarily like some part of some like a Southern Baptist Convention Lutheran type kind. Um, but uh, I know he's pretty conservative on a lot of lot of stuff. So, but other than that, I'm not totally sure. So, but uh, I, you know, that's what I know. Um, are they fans of me? I'm not totally sure. And I've, the jury's still out on all that. So let's just put, leave it that way. That's what I know. Um, Carrie Inn says, I work for a Chris, Christian school, and all the staff is charismatic except me. 
I bet that's fun. <laughs> I'm up to my knees in Kenneth Copeland and the like every day. I want to quit but feel guilty because I love my students. Oh, man. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What can she do? <laughs> that's hard. It's almost like being a, a Christian in the public school system. Yeah. They want to be that light, but it's hard. I mean, it is hard. It's one of those things that if you believe it's where the Lord wants you to be a light, but at the same time, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of, you have to kind of feel out the situation for yourself. I mean, of course, I, I don't, I mean, our, our kids are in a Christian school and there's stuff there that I don't agree with, but I think there's enough there that we do agree on that it's okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, if it, like I, if it was my kids in the school, that would be another issue, and everybody there is charismatic. I, I wouldn't be for that. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd pray for you, Carrie, on that. Make a good decision. So uh, I understand it's, it's a tough one. So James Anthony, can you expound on meekness, please? Yeah, meekness in the Bible. Um, man, there's – I mean, how do you define meekness? I think well, meekness – Is not weakness. Is not weakness. <laughs> so, so it's the easiest way to put it first. Yeah, and uh, meekness is not weakness, but meekness is more like strength under control. It's like I, uh, I'm i a strong guy, and I can body slam you, but I have control of my emotions, and I, uh, I'm i not going to lose my mind on you. I'm going to try my best to just love you and help you. And so someone said, uh, I, think it was, I think it was Jordan Peterson gave a good definition of meekness. He said, meekness is a man who has a sword, and he could use it any way he wants to, and he could probably chop your head off, but he chooses not to. And yeah. uh, that's a meek man. And, uh, so that, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the truth. So, um, but I think, I think the Bible says Moses was the meekest man who ever lived. And, uh, and I think that is, uh, it's meekness is not a bad thing. It's actually, it's more of a, you're, you're controlled, you're measured, you're kind of sober in a lot of ways. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, I think that's what we're supposed to, we're supposed to be as Christians. So, uh, let's see here. Matt Linton says, what do you think of David Jeremiah? You ever listen to him? I know of him. Yeah, I've yeah, him a few times. Yeah, he's um he's a great preacher. Says a lot of yeah. good stuff, but uh, you know he's he's kind of fell into the evangelical world where he said, you know, I'm tired of fighting everybody on everything, and yeah. <laughs> so when a guy gets tired of fighting, uh, he he surrenders ground to the enemies of the gospel, and I think uh, I think he's allowed a lot of bad music into his ministry and uh, a lot of uh, bad association stuff like that. Uh, I don't, I don't think he preaches anything necessarily that's heretical. That's like oh wow, the, you know he's a false teacher. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't preach the flying spaghetti monster or nothing like that. Uh, but I mean, you know, but at the same time, a guy, a guy can, a guy can preach the truth and because he's got bad associations, he can become a heretic of sorts. And, um, so, you know, that's, that's something that most evangelicals, that's, that's a piece of strong meat. They'll never be able to chew. Yeah. It's tough. So Esther says, pray for our church. Everybody getting sick, spreading like wildfire, hitting hard. Everybody getting sick. Pray for nobody else to be sick. Okay. So pray that nobody gets sick over there. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll do that. Did you hear Joyce Myers coming out with a devotional cube? <laughs> did you know that? I did see that. Yeah. I was going to send it to you, but I thought you already saw it. But yeah. Let's see. Add to your collection of uh, Joel. Oh, I need, I need one of those <laughs> cubes. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Um, Audio Cube Joyce Meyer Ministries. This is Christmas has come early for me. Come on, Internet. Let's get this going. Oh, yeah. Um, sermon Power Thoughts. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Look, at they put it right by your bed uh, so you can hail Satan right before you go to sleep. And uh, you can put it there in your kitchen and uh, so you can hail Satan while you eat food. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to – let's see here. How much How much they cost? Let's see. Let's add that to cart. I'm, oh, look! There's a donation tab as well as you, as you do that. So right we're off. gonna we're gonna donate zero dollars here, and uh, I gotta give a. Oh, it comes with a. Okay, okay. So if I donate one dollar to her ministry, I get the audio cube. Cool. Okay. Let's see here. Um, sign in to check out. So I gotta have, I gotta, I can get one for a dollar and I gotta sign in to her ministry page. So I don't want to create an account with Joyce Meyer. What in the world? Okay. So we got that. And then what, what do we need to do here? Let's see here. I don't want to do all this. Where else can I get one? Here we go. <laughs> um, are they on Amazon? Yeah, Amazon has let's everything. See, let's see here. Amazon, um, 
Joyce Meyer Cube. Let's see if it's on Amazon. And uh, Fire Cube. That's not what I need. What is all this? Anyway. Um, <laughs> ah, gracious. Okay. We're going to we're gonna have to take care of that later. So, um, but yeah, we're, um, I just feel so bad about that. I don't want to give Joyce Meyer a dollar. I might have to, though, <laughs> for all this. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Well, Joyce Meyer Ministries is going to get a dollar from me. There it is, right in the thick of all these <laughs> books and everything. All right. Anyway, what a joy. Thank you for sharing that with me. And, uh, yeah, buddy, that's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. And uh, thank you for that. Uh, let's see here. What do you think about churches renting their space to other churches? I don't know if I have enough info to give you something helpful there. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Mom has surgery. Okay. Uh, Joyce Meyer has a sermon cube come out. Yep. And uh, don't let Mr. Kismo find out. It's funny. All right. So Juicy Raisin says, what do you think about Black China's conversion to Christianity? Her story of getting saved is vague, but she quit. Her OnlyFans dissolves her fillers and res- removing satanic tattoos. Um, I-, I think that's that's good stuff. But here's the thing. And all celebrity conversions right now, this this day and time, need to be we need to be we need to realize yes people can get saved i i don't i'm not diminishing that i think people can get saved but we need to be super skeptical because there is a false spirit working in the lives of these hollywood people and that false spirit can cause them to have a conversion like experience that is uh, and they'll 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 even say they they got saved. Yeah, I've got born again. Jesus is my savior. And they'll talk all that talk for a little while, but it, it's it's fake and it's it's demonic deception. And so you have to be very careful with these people and and just realize that yeah something 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 could be off with them. So I would uh, I would just tell you there be careful. So um, let's see here. Is there gifting memberships in the live chat? Thank you so very much uh let's see if i can go through some of these comments here um let's see here uh so if you get it and sit next to joel o- joel osteen's cube you'll have the have cube squared <laughs> <laughs> yeah buddy so um yeah man okay so question for spencer has heil seminary fallen into something bad um i'm concerned because our church supports the school is that Hiles Anderson? That's what I would assume, yeah. Yeah, Hiles Anderson College. Um, have they fallen into something bad? Uh, well, n- no. I, I mean, I think I think they're probably better than ever right now as far as what they were compared to what they are now. Um, I mean, when it was – look, I'm going to tell you, I've got, I've got stuff. I've got letters that were behind the scenes – things that weren't that weren't released to the public i have those things in this office that happened during the jack scop era of that ministry and i'm gonna tell you they covered for some heinous stuff heinous yeah. stuff and it was no surprise to me that jack scott fell in the sin it was really no surprise to anybody that jack scott fell in the sin the man was weird the man was really weird um and so when they got when he fell and they brought Wilkerson in. I think they're probably better off than they've been in quite a long time. I've and, only seen um, a lot of positive things about Wilkerson. Um, I think yeah. he's done a good job so far. I haven't seen anything negative yet. Not that I'm watching it, but well, there's always good things. There's always negative. There's always about something. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, somebody. There's a video about me on the internet, and somebody in the comment section said, uh, uh, "You know, what? Do, what do you think about Spencer Smith? The, the the comment sections are all over the place on this guy." Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you can thought, find somebody if you look for something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's about what I thought. So, um, yeah. So that that's what I just tell you. You know, I I I know a couple of the guys that are up there, and uh, I'm just telling folks like look hey you know um just let's just see what happens let's just hold the line let's not let's not do anything drastic and uh that's what i'd tell you to do there so very good very good question here um <clears throat> ross friday says there's been uh there's talk that there have been many sightings of aliens and monsters this year <laughs> Nephilims, don't forget that. The <laughs> Nephilim showed up in miami and raided the nike store and got all the air jordans and they were 10 foot tall, so they, they, they had to go get the size 15, the shacks, out of the back. And um, 
and all the police showed up in Miami because the Nephilim are coming up from the hollow earth and they're RH negative and they're using intergravitational dimensional beams to fry people's brains and the men in black had to go down there and clean up the situation and just like they did with Will Smith where he hit that little button and everybody lost their memory, that's what happened to everybody at that mall in Miami. It's exactly right. The Nephilim are returning and the creatures that have the, you know, the scorpion tails in the book of Revelation, they're on their way too. And CERN is going to open up the, uh, the, the Apollyon portal and, uh, and, and, and they're going to do all that. And it's going to be really amazing. And the lizard people will rule finally. That's what's going to happen. Did you rehearse that? That was pretty good. No, I did. I just made that up as I went. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back because I need a break. Uh. Hey guys, we've got a Spreadshirt store available now and we want to make you guys aware of this because some of you just may have not been around long enough to see this, but man, we've got all kinds of t-shirts and merchandise for sale. Uh, all the Doctrine Matters designs that we have. Uh, we've got even like the cool video game that we played before our live streams. That's available on a t-shirt and mug and everything. Also, our Flat Moon Society merchandise is available. You can put that on a mug like we have, uh, put on hats, all kinds of stuff. The classic Doctrine Matters design, that is available on in all shapes and and colors and everything like that. I mean, we've got it on polos. We've got it on teddy bears. We've got it on everything. And then two God from Idols to Serve. You better quit your meanness. Our Sam P. Jones line up there. Uh, I've really enjoyed that on a mug that I have. And then things are looking really good because things are looking really bad. That is actually one of our all-time bestsellers right there. People have really enjoyed that. And then, of course, I'm just here to be a blessing. We've got that on kids' clothes. We've got it on aprons. We've got it on hoodies. We've got it on hats. And, I mean, just almost anything you can think of it's on there. So hit the link below, visit our Spreadshirt store, buy some merchandise that helps support our channel, and we appreciate you guys helping us out in that regard. And don't forget, guys, Doctrine Matters, and we believe that so much, we put it on some clothes, and we put it on hats and all kinds of stuff, and I even have it right here on my shirt there. So visit the Spread Shop store today, go ahead and get you some stuff, and this stuff ships very quickly and is actually very high-quality merchandise. You guys will not be disappointed, I promise you. You guys have a good day. We love you. See you later. All right, the moon is flat, and uh, that's that's all I got to say. The moon is flat. Go ahead and smite that like button. Got 500 people watching and got 200 or so thumbs up already. Take a moment, please. Help this channel out and smite that like button. And if you don't do so, then the lizard people will get you. I promise you that. Uh, you do not want to mess with that. I learned something today. The lizard people are behind every nefarious thing that has ever happened in history. I'm going to show you this on our Facebook page. Um, you people don't realize it, but uh, the uh, the lizard people were actually the ones who sank the Titanic. And um, it, it's very important that everybody understands that. Can you see that, Brother Ross, right there? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's so. what we're going for. And, uh, that, that's very important. Everybody understands that there is a version of history that has not been promoted to the public. And, uh, we are here to raise awareness of these terrible things that are happening. It was Gojira who is one of the arch lieutenants of the hollow earth. And, uh, and he has RH negative Nephilim. And, uh, and, and so that is what is happening here. And so brother Ross, uh, the people are talking about Nephilims and, and, uh, and is, is the Nephilim. Nephilim fallen angel theory is that biblical and are there fallen angels riding around the earth right now uh, pulling uh, uh, rigging elections for Democrats and uh, sitting at the World Economic Forum right now is that what's going on with these Nephilim brother? It has to be. Has to be. In Miami. Yeah, must be. Something's going on. Pray for the Foot Locker employees <laughs> down there. <laughs> and uh, are the lizard people are the real Illuminati. That's what a lot of people think. And uh, that's what we have uh, thought about for a few moments. Anyway, so um, very good question right there. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, just wonder what denomination is Vadi Bakum? Southern Baptist, isn't he? Uh, I th I think he's Southern Baptist, but he is a true dyed in the wool Calvinist. Like yeah, he is heavily a reformed Calvinist. heavily reformed. Um, I mean, he you know they're they're the type that are. Um, uh, where did, where'd you go? There you are. Uh, they're the type that uh, you know. I, I I don't even know how you describe it, but 
like they don't believe in leading people in prayers as far as all that goes, but like, but like beyond that, like, um, they give their kids the gospel, they do all that stuff, but like, he don't believe in the age of accountability. Uh, I think he's a millennial, I think, but, uh, he's, you know, him and I would have some differences on some things, but, uh, he's said a lot of good stuff through the years. He's a very hardcore conservative. Um, yeah. He almost, I don't know if he knew, but he almost got the uh, Southern Baptist Convention president. Um, he's going to run for it. A lot of people wanted him to do it. And honestly, it probably would have been as bad as Southern Baptist has been. It would have been good for him, but sure. they didn't want it. Um, yeah. yeah, he's He is a hardcore Calvinist. but Hardcore, <laughs> hardcore. Calvinist. <laughs> he is hardcore, pin the needle all the way. Yeah. <laughs> you like know? He, uh, he defines Tulip like he is. Yeah, to the core. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 like he, he's one of the tough ones. Uh, I think I think he's more like R.C. Sproul than people yeah. realize, and uh, that might be where he learned all that. So, um, uh, Audrey Geddes says, "Can a divorced man marry, or is divorced man or woman remarry?" Um. It, well, here here's the question on that. Legally, morally, or biblically? That that's the three layers of that question. Legally, can you get remarried? Yes. Uh what is it? What does it say? Morally, morally, can a can a woman who's been divorced get remarried? I, I don't know if anybody have any moral objections to that. Um spiritually, it depends on the context of the situation. For example, there you know, let's just throw out some hypothetical, stupid, ridiculous situation. Okay. Can a man who is teaching Sunday school at a church or he's a deacon at a church or, or he's, um, let's just say he sings at a church and he has an affair with his, you know, the 21 year old babysitter and his wife leaves him and he marries the babysitter and he's, you know, he's 40 and he, I don't know, just, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, let's just say he's 50 and he marries the 25 year old babysitter and he wants to crawl back into church and act like nothing happened. Um, there'd be an issue there, but legally, morally, I don't think there'd be a problem there. I don't guess, but, uh, scripturally it would depend on the scenario around all that and the, the, uh, the info on all that. And so, I, I, you know, it's, it's not just a real, can, can you remarry? That's that there's, there's interesting stuff around that. Um, there's biblical things around that, like abandonment. Um, you know, there's, uh, it even says, I think in the book of first Peter talking about those who have unbelieving, uh, women who have unbelieving husbands, it encourages them to not divorce them, to stay with them and uh, stuff like that. Uh, Kirsten says this, uh, cough, Greg Locke, cough. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree there. So that that's, you know, that's something I'll say. Can, you, can, a, can a man get divorced and remarry and then go pastor a church biblically? No. Um, so, yeah, that's not, that's, that, that, that's what I'm saying. It, it's not that cut and dry a question, if that makes sense to you. Um, it's, it's more of there's, you know, like if your husband, if, if, a if a woman's husband dies, can she remarry? Yeah, that's fine. Um, but when it comes to like the relationship to the church and being spiritual, there's, you know, it just depends on the scenario. There's no real cut and dry answer I can give. It's kind of a vague question, but that's okay. Uh, Michelle, we says that babysitter story happened to my sister. Oh boy. But then, uh, she's now on her third husband. Oh, that's fun. That's- that sounds like a lot of fun. So we started a conversation with the uh, uh, with the babysitter stuff here, anyway. So, <laughs> oh boy, that wasn't a crazy idea. But. Yeah, well, it happens. I've <laughs> it I've does. heard a lot of stories like that. Or a secretary, you no, know, yeah, the secretary or the or the babysitter. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's there's a lot of stuff. And we opened the, the lid on Calvinism as well. And, um, so let's see here, uh, aren't reformed Baptist Calvinist, um, hang on there, there, let's see here. Um, let's see here. I got, there's something I was going to look up the other day. Um, there's a difference between reformed and Calvinism. Let's see here. And, um, let's see here. I want to see if I can find, there he is. What is Calvinism and is it biblical? Yeah, there's, there's like, yeah, uh, you got to be reformed. You got to be covenantal, and then you got to um, 
See, it goes along with different doctrines as well. It's not just a salvation point of view. No, I mean, like, be, like you could be. Ref, I, 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 I need to look this up because I was I was wondering about this the other day, and there's a there's a technical definition of uh, of this where you can be like you can be reformed but not technically Calvinistic, and you can be reformed soteriolo- soteriolo- soteriologically. Uh, but not necessarily like like you're not covenantal. You don't baptize babies, that kind of stuff. Um, and so there's 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 like a there's a differentiation between those two. So, um, okay. Um, and 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 Calvinism is a broader thing other than just how you believe people get saved. It actually yeah. has to do with um, with end times beliefs and stuff like that. And I can't find what I was looking for, but I'll I'll have to look that up later. But um, a lot of Baptists have taken issue with the idea of being a Baptist and being Calvinist at the same time, saying they're incompatible. And um, so I, I've, I want to look into that. I want to look into that a little bit deeper so that I can give you a good answer, not just something off the cuff there. So uh, am I missing anything on that, Justin? What do you think? Without getting into an hour-long conversation, there is... I used to think that Calvinist was or Reform was just a renaming of Calvinism, and it's really not. Yeah, um, th- there's more to it than just that. It is more than just a soteriology point of view. Um, there is a difference between that and their, if you will, Old Testament or the Covenantalist point of view and the Dispensations point of view. And it's not as simple. It's like <clears throat> there's a hundred different Baptists. And there's different, mm. if I could say, levels of Reformed theology and how they believe in that. And there's, it's hard to say this is just Reform and this mm. is just Calvinism and. It's hard without getting into a long discussion in the sense of which one's which and define what you mean by Calvinism. Yeah. And define what you mean by Reformed theology or uh, define what you mean by um, Arminianism. And usually they try to put those in two separate camps and say you have to choose one or the other. I'm like, yeah. That, that, that argument comes up all the time. It drives me crazy. I'm, I'm not Arminius. I'm not Calvinist <laughs> by yeah. definition. They both have a little bit of truth in there, but I'm just a Bible believing Christian. There is this middle option. Then it kind of Reformed branches off of Calvinism in a way, but. Without getting a deep discussion, yeah. it's, it, it, there's more to it than just saying they're not the same thing. Sure. But they are very, very similar, yes, but it's not just a rebranding of the name. Well, it says, uh, Kirsten said this, uh, she says what I'm trying to say. Some Calvinists would say they aren't Reformed, but I think all Reformed are Calvinists or vice versa. Some Reformed people would say that they're not Calvinists. That's true, yeah. Because being a Calvinist has more to do, like, um, confessional, Calvinistic, and covenantial. I think is what I'm I'm looking for, and covenantial is like your baby sprinkling, uh, like R. C. Sproul was a true Calvinist. Yes, like he a, was. He is defining of what Calvinism is. Yeah, but like but like John MacArthur was different in that he didn't baptize babies, and um, and he was more of a dispensational view of the scriptures, whereas yeah. like R. C. Sproul was different. So there's a difference there, um, and there's actually different like different shades of that. So if you call somebody a Calvinist. Um, it's not, it, it's, it's too broad a term it is, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yes. It's, it's too yeah. broad. It, there's, you, you gotta, you gotta whittle it down to something more specific. Like, like people say Spencer, you know, Spencer's an IFB guy. And, and I always have to say, well, what do you mean by that? And, and I've, I find that like when, when people are hurling the slur IFB, they're talking about Steven Anderson. Yeah. And I have I have so many differences between him and me that I there's no way you could call me the same thing he is. And yeah. so I think I think we broad brush a little bit uh they broad brush IFB all the time, but I think uh, I think within within the spectrum of Calvinism there's there's shades there and I I, I want to be able to break all that down. And um Let's see. Trace uh, Sever says, "Was Spurgeon a Calvinist?" Uh, yes, he, he, was, he was. Yes, absolutely, he was. Um, but you go read his sermons. There ain't no way you could throw that stuff out. You know that stuff's yeah. rich, buddy. Oh my goodness, it's rich. Um, so I am not definitely not going to be throwing that out at, at all. So getting a text here from uh, our our clarifying expert here. Um, let's see here. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is this is what I'm looking for. Let me th- let me throw this on the screen, and uh, Kirsten, send me the link to this. And um, it's, this is what it says right here. It is my contention we be, we can be Calvinistic, and uh, what is this from TrinityRBC.com? It is my contention that we can be Calvinistic and not Reformed, but we can't be Reformed and not be Calvinistic. Um. I'm I'm confused, um, so <laughs> I, I I don't even know where we're going anymore. So I, I we, let's let's move on. 
<laughs> I'm just trying to I'm trying to say this is this is a wild stuff. So yeah. Um Randall Randall W says independent fundamental pre trade Keith James Oli Baptist Amen. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> we'll cleanse the palate with that one is what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Jam says, uh, Spencer, thanks for the third Adam watch. The road to Shambhala and wondered about handbells to hymns in an expository preaching church. Not all bells are ums, right? You, you ever seen those handbells? Yeah, I played them before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my wife has too. Uh, handbells are not a sin. They're It's like the... The it's like a xylophone or something like that. So that's basically what it is. Rambo Ducky says, "Who preaches the flying spaghetti monster?" I, I forget what that is. That there's an actual church, um, that preaches the flying spaghetti monster. And uh, yeah, let's let's pull this up here real fast for everybody. It's an actual website with actual church, and it's called the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. You ever seen this before? I have not. No. Oh, man, it's a real religion. And uh, rejoice, you have found the way. Now share unto others, and they promote the flying spaghetti monster on their website. And um, so, and this is called spaghettimonster.org. And uh, sightings of the spaghetti monster have been found all over the world. And they, they oh, this is so stupid. But they, they, they like actually have legal uh, uh, 501c3 church standing for the church of the flying spaghetti oh, monster. It it's, it's a real thing, <laughs> man. I'm just messed up about that. So, um, what about Paul Washer? Seems like people either love him or hate him. Does he stand for anything heretical or is he solid? Um, well, Paul Washer and Vadi Bakva, I guess, are basically the same. I was gonna say that they're in that thing. reform crowd, yeah. yeah. And you know, and the thing is, like, like I've listened to Paul Washer, um, he preached that that sermon years ago at the Southern Baptist Youth Rally. It is called the world's most shocking youth message. Yeah. You ever heard that? I've seen that video. Yeah. Oh, buddy, he roasted that crap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I I was sitting I there. Loved it. I was a senior at Crown College when I saw that, yeah. and that's kind of when Paul Washer came on the scene. And uh, and I remember watching that, thinking these people are being destroyed by this man. They're clapping. They're like, yeah. And he's like, y- you realize I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Um, I had a real bad experience early, early on because I had a brother-in-law that uh, became a Calvinist. He was a student at Crown College, became a Calvinist, and then he started drinking. And I told him, I said, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? He goes, man, I just been, I've just been i been listening to this Calvinism, just getting in all this stuff, and, and uh, Paul Washer and, and, you know, and whatever. He named off a couple names. And I just said, okay, well, Paul, if Paul Washer's preaching that, I'm out, and and I just I just wrote it off for years, and then I found out later Paul Washer does not preach that. It's just that my brother in law is mentally ill, and uh, that's what that's what it was. So that's that that was what my experience for years with all that. But I've looked, I've listened to some of his stuff, and um, and you know he he says a lot of really good stuff. He really does, yeah. Um, you know, and and you know I'm not trying to become a fanboy of his. Um, I I think I I still think um. Uh, let's see here. Somebody just texted me. I get these things wrong. Uh, Reformed is confessional, covenantal, and Calvinist. Okay, so Calvinism is just the soteriology of being Reformed. Okay, so that that's it. I, I'm trying to understand all that. So thank you for whoever sent that to me. I don't have your number saved in my phone. Uh, but, yeah, he said a lot of good stuff. But I, I still put him in the evangelical category because that's where he puts himself. And then you know uh, the G three crowd and all those guys they're all they're all evangelicals they're nice guys say a lot of good stuff uh, we have a lot of common enemies and we stand on, on a lot of the same things but uh, but they call themselves evangelicals and um, you know that I'm I'm gonna let them call themselves that they uh, James White's in the middle of all that James White uses the word fundamentalism like a cuss word and he hates he hates the idea of fundamentalism. And stuff like that. So, um, you know, just just guys like Paul Washer. There's things I, I'll disagree with him about, um, and um, you know, that's why I just tell folks to whatever you want to do on that. Just just you know, just know that that's that's not what we are here necessarily. But we're not enemies with those people either. So. Jody Heskett says, "Same with Erwin Lutzer says good stuff." But Moody's getting so liberal. You went to Moody. <laughs> <laughs> it's a can of worms there. Why don't you tell us about Moody? Yeah, <laughs> yeah this guy this guy's got stories about Moody. Too let's many just stories. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's let's just let's we'll we'll let that one go, but you're right. We'll make a whole video on that one, dude. That's 
Yeah, we, we'll try to do on that. Um, let's see here. Um, Spencer, I will order a cube for you. I can't get off her mailing list. It would be my pleasure. Well, thank you for that. Oh, God bless yeah. you. We'll look forward to that. You have my address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Friendly Evangelist says, I was disappointed with Jonathan Kahn was with Kenneth Copeland. Some stuff Kahn says is right on, but it's strange that he's with Kenneth Copeland. Yikes. Well, Kenneth Copeland says a couple things that are right on too. So, um, yeah. So, that, and that's just how it all works. Uh, what are your thoughts of Truth Unedited? You ever watch that? Is that a YouTube channel? I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm familiar with it. I'm pretty sure that's a YouTube channel. To... Uh, let's see. Let's pull. Let's pull this up here. Um, if it's the one I'm thinking of, um, I'm getting thumbs down right now. Yeah, there was one. Um, yeah, this this is it right here. Um, this is like a faceless channel. Um, I'd have to go back and watch, but this channel had a real weird video where they said in the tribulation period, God's people are going to be warring with the Antichrist, which I agree with. But he he gave an illustration of us warring with the Antichrist. And there was an old show about superheroes on NBC or something like that. I forget what the name. I think it was called Heroes or something like that. And he showed them shooting fireballs out of their hands and stuff like that. And he says, we're going to be warring with the Antichrist. And God's going to give us signs and wonders to war with the Antichrist with. And he made it out like we were X-Men fighting against the Antichrist system. And I was like, what is that all about? Um, so I, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not even sure what he was going for there. Uh, but uh, and I'm, I'm about 90% sure it was this guy. Um, somebody sent me that a long time ago, and um, let's see here. I mean, I, I don't even know what this is. I got my the RAM in my computer is running so slow right now. I have way too many tabs open. Um, it's kind of like my mind. <laughs> so that random music playing in the background. I don't know where it's come from. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. So that's I. I just tell you, uh, I I don't know enough about him to really give a solid commentary but if it's the guy i'm thinking of i think he said some weird stuff like that but i'm not sure so let me just uh throw that out there five dollar super chat from bible baptist truth tube high spencer towards buying the joyce meyer cube all right yeah buddy thank you very much hiles is fine now pastor john wilkerson is a great godly pastor i, I like john wilkerson he's been a nice guy uh the lizard people will rule but you could still save 15 percent on car insurance only by switching to geico only. only by switching to Nephilim. Yeah. Okay. So Petrol Head says, could you comment on the doctrine of election? Yeah. Comment on that one, Spencer. <laughs> Everybody's trying to make me enemies with everybody tonight. This is fun. Um, let's see here. Okay. Is the doctrine of election the same as Calvinism? It is It is under the umbrella of Calvinism, and is it is basically the idea that God chose before, and, and, and this is the Calvinistic definition of it. The Calvinistic definition of it is that God chose before the foundation of the earth who would be saved and who would not be saved, and um, and he elected them to be so, and that, that's what they believe, and so, uh, you know, that type of stuff. Now, I'll tell you this. Um, does God know who will and will not be saved? Yes, yeah. God knows that. Uh, to go to go beyond that, though, is where I get uncomfortable, and that's where they get into all kinds of stuff. Like, uh, you know, so that, that's where they say, "Okay, God looked forward to see who would and would not be saved, and then He sent Jesus to only die for those." Those. Okay, so if God from the foundation of the earth looked forward in time and saw that you would not get saved, Jesus Christ did not die for you. And that's limited atonement. That's what you would have to say, yeah. And they miss words like Christ after the whole world. First yeah. Peter 3, 9, the whosoever. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, the whosoever. John three sixteen, the whosoever. You have to throw it. I know they try to have answers for them that say, once you're saved, well, now you're the whosoever. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, they try to twist it. We have to add words to Scripture to get that. That's, right. It's going off an end that I can't follow, essentially. Yeah, and I have I have a lot of reservations on that, and I've had some very candid conversations, some good yeah. conversations with guys about that, and I just I just I don't know if I can go there with them, and I'm not mad at them. I'm not saying you know they're not saved or you know that they believe in the flying spaghetti monster or nothing like that. Uh, I just I just 
at this point, I don't see that. And I, I, I love you and for you, but uh, that's just not where I go with all that yet. So and I got two thumbs down by just saying that. So praise the Lord. Um, can I get every button on the soundboard hitting 42 on Wednesday? And as you know, 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything I'm ready to send. JK, praising God for it all. Well, happy birthday, my brother. <laughs> That's a weird noise. It is. That's really weird, but praise the Lord, we got it done anyway. So, all right. So, let's see here. Let's go to the next one. Um, I'm, I'm done with Calvinism for tonight. Um, how can we be sure our church is independent, Baptist, and fundamental? Well, fundamentalist just means that you're you're conservative and you're separated from error and false teaching. So, like, if, you know, if they're having uh, uh, uh I don't know if they're having Joyce Meyer Sunday at your church. They're probably not fundamental. If they're playing casting crowns at your church, they're probably not very fundamental. Um, and uh, so, if they're if they're part of the Southern Baptist Convention, they're not they're not um, you know they're not independent, of course. But it, you know, being a fundamentalist, I would say there's even with that there's some shades and that some layers of that. Uh, I think a guy can be way too separated where he thinks nobody outside of his little circle is saved. Um, I think some guys can go way too far to where they become a cult of their own. Uh, my message to evangelicalism has been to take it, you know, step one or two big fat steps to the right, and I think you guys will be a lot better off. And that's been my message to these guys. Um, so being a fundamentalist is entails me that you're you're fully separated from false teachers and false teachings. Looking at you, John Piper. Uh, John Piper is definitely not a fundamentalist. He'll go preach anywhere. And uh, there are some independent Baptists that I don't think are fundamentalists, but I think they're good preachers. So um, Brandon says this, Hey, Brother Spencer, tell, should, I, uh, should I tell the leadership at the charismatic church I attend that I want to leave and join an IFB church, or should I just leave? Um, I would just leave. Yeah. Unless, you, unless you're like, the the song leader or something, you know, then don't just not show up that way. Uh, but if you just attend and you're not really all that involved, I would just go and just just don't even just say you know if they if they call you say I love you, but I'm gonna go over here now. And um, that's what I that's what I tell folks right there. So petrol head thirty dollars super chat. Thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, man, um, can say just from experience that growing up in a broken family brought me to poor, uh, into poor choices. I am forgiven, but went through a lot of heartbreak. Well, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's tough stuff. So, um, looking here at the comments, let's take a quick break, uh, brother Justin, and uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna try to get in these comments, and then we'll uh, we'll have a good time tonight. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be right back. When I was 18 years old, I was under terrible conviction of my sin and I didn't understand what I needed to do. I really was lost and had no man to guide me. I went to the grocery store and a book caught my eye and it was called God's Promises for Your Every Need. This is the exact copy of that book, the one that I bought when I was 18. As I was going through the book, I discovered that it really didn't have a whole lot about the plan of salvation in there. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you'll let me someday, I'd like to do a book, something like this, but better. And that being said, the Lord has allowed us to do a book just like that. And we are thrilled to introduce to you guys today the Doctrine Matters Bible Topic Guidebook. This book has over 300 pages of Bible verses categorized in all different relevant topics. What does the Bible say about addiction? What does it say about being afraid? What does it say about alcohol? What does it say about backsliding and baptism, the local church? Uh, what does it say about carnality and character? Uh, we cover topics like finances, money, persecution, preaching, profanity, sobriety, strife, vengeance, unbelief, your thoughts, your testimony, your walking with God, worship and witnessing and zeal. All of that is covered in this book. This book contains over 2,000 different verses on all these topics. And we encourage you guys to hit the link in the description below and buy one of these off of Amazon and consider buying one for a friend or a family member as a gift. And you could buy one for a person who's struggling because this book is designed to help people understand what the Bible has to say about all these great topics. We pray that the Lord would bless you as you get your copy of the Doctrine Matters Bible Topic Guidebook.
Well, if you're like... All right, let's see here. All right, guys, thank you guys very much for being here with us. We appreciate all you guys watching tonight. Had four super chats, and uh, we appreciate all you guys. Robin Panky, Bible Baptist Truth Tube, Brandon Petrol Head, and uh, all gave tonight. And we appreciate you guys very much for that. Uh, let me bring something up here for you guys. I'm working on our website, trying to update a lot of stuff like that. And uh, we've got something, the Third Adam Series fundraiser. We're trying to raise some money for that. Uh, that has gone along very well. We have, we have uh, some new equipment that has come in. And um, uh, we, we tried to aim for about $15,000. Uh, the count that I have is that we're about halfway there. And uh, so we're looking, uh, and, and Bon Jovi song just went in my mind when I said that. And uh, we're halfway there living on a prayer. Yeah, so, um, but that's about where we are. We, we're going to, um, we, you guys have done so well supporting this channel and i i am just so thankful for you guys um and we've got you know we've got some stuff like this that we're trying to get folks to help us uh purchase and stuff i i think um i think we're we're pretty close to being able to um as far as as far as equipment and stuff like that uh i think we're getting pretty close is all that so uh please pray for us on that and i i'd, I'd really would appreciate that and then also uh we are sending out a prayer letter in the morning uh for everybody and uh, our website missionary spencer smith.com just hit two hundred thousand views mm -hmm. so that's cool so check us out there i don't know i don't even know where people are coming from with our uh our stuff i think they uh i think they look up our channel and then they google me and then they start going through my doctrinal statement and just to see who i am and um so yeah that's that's what we think is going on there but anyway um i gotta take that page off that's a that's not good so anyway but uh check us out on there if you will please and that'll be a blessing uh let's see here got uh, victoria elliott just became a channel member Praise the Lord for you. God bless you. And uh, let's see here. Um, good fight ministries. Are they false or no? Uh, they're they're different on us some stuff. Uh, they seem to be nice guys, and I think they agree with me on a lot of stuff, which I am the standard of right and wrong, Brother Justin. I am the standard of theological correctness. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Um, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the, let's see. Trace Sever says this. They're not uh, pre-trib or once saved, always saved. So, yeah, that, that's kind of some of the differences we have there. Uh, but they seem to be nice guys, and I appreciate them. Uh, they kind of backed me up a little bit on the Kat Von D deal. That was fun. Um, so, matter of fact, let me just say that about Kat Von D. Like, she was Marilyn Manson's wife at some point. Did you know that? Yep. Yeah. So, if Marilyn Manson came out and said, by the way, I just got saved. I'm a believer in Christ. And, I, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm going to keep making the music that I've always made. Like, would would you have a problem with that? I mean, I I think I would, because your your stuff you've made all your life is trash, and um and you know uh, I I just I just don't think that's good fruit. But Kat Von D's doing that, and everybody is real you know real soft and well, I just like her. And that's the only thing. That's the only, the only different. The different dynamic between the two is one is a big, ugly male who has a very off-putting personality, and the other is a very soft, lovey, soft-spoken female. She's, you know, everybody thinks she's beautiful, and 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 she handles herself well. And that's the difference. That's the only difference and all that stuff right there. So when we hit 200,000 subscribers, we're going to blow up some Tannerite. Uh, we're going to blow up a car. Justin Ross is here. He's a Marine. He's a sharpshooter. And uh, so Johnny's a good shooter. Did you know that? I did, yeah. Yeah, Johnny's a good shooter. And uh, he can do all that. He's got that 308 bolt-action rifle. We can take care of that and all that good stuff. We are going to get demonetized. That's okay. <laughs> so, a lot of bad words. We're there. saying all these words. <laughs> we're saying all these words. We need to stop. we got to quit all that stuff right there. So, well, anyway, we've gone over an hour tonight. I've got a um, – let's see here. Um, yeah, I know what, man. <sighs> Brother, and you better look. I'm gonna tell you something. This I'm just looking at my text message right now. I'm gonna say this: If you're young, you better do something for Jesus while you still are young, because when you get old, you have a lot of setbacks. Let's just put it that way. So, 
I just want to throw that out there, bud, Justin. I'm glad you heard that. So from your older brother here. <laughs> Much older. <laughs> yes, I'm the aged divine divine one. I almost said divine feminine. I'm the. Uh, I thought not, you were going to say it, actually. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm not that. So pray for me. Hey, so, uh, guys, let me tell you this, too. Uh, follow us on Twitter, if, if you haven't yet, uh, and, and Instagram as well. Uh, we are. I'm trying to get uh, 10,000 followers on both of these platforms, Instagram and Instagram and uh and twitter or x or whatever and i just can't get there so help my ego and uh get me to these platforms so go follow us on there jason whitlock retweeted me today on twitter he's Didn't got like seven hundred fifty thousand followers on twitter he retweeted me today and my twitter has blown up today he has sent so much hate and traffic my way anyway so and then also if you are on facebook and a lot of you guys are Go like our missionary Spencer Smith page. We're actually doing a contest on there right now about the uh, about uh, a new uh, what are we talking about a new uh, profile picture for me and uh, and that's what we're going trying to do. Let's see, we got we got some good ones in there. Let's see if I can pull one up. Um, I see here. Um, yeah, there's there's some there's some good ones in there, bro. There's some really good. I did I haven't seen that one yet. Ha, that's funny. And uh, I like that one, but uh, let's see. There, there was another good one in here. <clears throat> There's some guy blowing up my live chat or blowing up my chat there. That's from Jason. That's funny. Um, let's see here. Look at this one. Someone made this. That don't look nothing like me. Well, you know. Shut up. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being funny. Uh, let's see. I like this one. What do you think of that one? I didn't get the message across. Ah, yeah, look like Alex Jones or something. That's what it looks like. I'm getting. I said another word. I'm gonna get demonetized. <laughs> anyway, but go go follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and uh, we we would appreciate that very much. And uh, that will be a great thing. So check us out there. Uh, someone said Twitter is wild, and I I agree with that. Hey, I've got enough screen real estate now. I can put the live chat on the screen. That'll be fun. Praise the Lord. I can do that. That'll be good. So um, <clears throat> got to edit that one and make you super saying that would be funny. Um, yeah, maybe we can do that. But go follow us on these platform, guys, and uh, that'll be a great blessing, and we would enjoy that. Brother Justin, you got anything you want us, any words of wisdom before we go? Anything you want to throw out there to the audience? Words of wisdom. Well, it was fun tonight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I got to get a little more into knowledgeable of well, that Calvinism, Reformed theology, that's something I really want to get into because um, I dealt with it a lot at Moody. And yeah. um, that's a very heavily Reformed school. Um, mm-hmm. And I really dove into it. And it, it, it's more clear to me why I hold a Bible position. Let's just say that, not a man position. Man, but, there's a lot of people who have debated that stuff for centuries, brother. It and is, I'm and just I, like, And I know wow. you're never going to. But basically, don't follow man, follow Scripture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Get into the Word of God. That's, that's one thing I noticed there was they were big if I could say man followers, mm-hmm. traditional followers, and scripture was just, well, that's just your opinion. You know, mm-hmm. We need to follow tradition more. We need to follow. So that's, stick to the scriptures. It's a yeah. lot easier. If you stick with truth, it's a lot harder to be wrong because you can't. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, well, that's what I say. I say let's just get uh, let's just get into the Bible and see what the yeah. Bible says and just do that. That's what I'm all about. So, all right. Well, thank you, Brother Justin, for that. I appreciate you guys. And, uh, folks, thank you guys for being channel members. If you're not a channel member yet, please consider doing so. We can do it for $1.99 a month. I've got some people here that I will be um, – They've they've joined at level two and above, and uh, I am sending them free CDs for joining at level two, and so you guys can be a part of that. Uh, also, if you don't if you don't know about this, uh, we actually have an Etsy store. Um, let's see here. I don't I, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like like effeminate even saying that, brother Justin. I, I heard it. Yes. Um, yeah. Is that is that wrong? I just I don't know. I just want to. Is that? It's it's basically <clears throat> an eBay for a lot of things. Yeah, but. <laughs> Well, we do have an Etsy store. We have some CDs for sale on there. We have some Joel Osteen golf balls. Um, and then we got our patches on there as well. So go check us out. It's the Doctrine Matters Etsy store. It's, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm wondering, is Etsy effeminate like like Pinterest or something like that? Is it Or is it okay? I honestly always thought it was, but yeah. I know there's a lot of 
guys that do stuff on sell stuff on their club. Well, but I just, it's just the name itself. It's always threw me off. Hey, let me <laughs> let me show you this. There was a um, let's see here. There was something on here I followed the other day. Let me let me see if I can pull it up. I, it was stinking funny. This guy was um, let's see here. What what there was some what was it I was looking at? There was something on here. Anyway, there, there was a store. There, there was a store that I was following. And uh, let's see here. Home favorites. Where are my favorites? I know. How do you work this dumb thing? I don't even know. Whatever. Anyway. But anyway, check out our Etsy store. we got some stuff we're mailing out. We'll, we know you guys will really like that. And um, someone asked me if I'm selling arts and crafts on Etsy. No, I'm not. <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> I love crocheting. So, no, I don't. Um, so appreciate that. There was a guy who was making swords and leather Bibles on Etsy. Saying, there's it, some it was cool. stuff on there. Yeah. Like it was cool. So um, Etsy isn't effeminate. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just asking the questions. I'm just I'm just saying what everybody's thinking out loud. So anyway, but we appreciate you guys very much. Go ahead and smack that like button. Got 316 likes tonight. Thank you very much for that. And uh, we appreciate that very much. And we will talk to you guys next time. Have a great day. sheep just grazing in the field that's been provided i follow close behind the one who's led me all this way he watches o'er his tender flock with vision undivided providing everything we need with mercy every day the shepherd leads his sheep along this winding narrow road through grassy fields and shady pastures by the rivers flow i'm not driven down this path i trod i follow him by choice i don't need to see the way ahead i only need to hear the shepherd's voice he speaks in quiet peaceful tones with love and compassion guiding every step i take i know i'm in his care though the path is dark and dim i'll follow his direction i will not fear what lies ahead for i know he will be sheep along this winding narrow road through grassy fields and shady pastures by the rivers flow i'm not driven down this path i trod i follow him by choice i don't need to see the way ahead i only need the shepherd's voice I don't need to see the way ahead I only need to hear the shepherd's voice